Scattered across various rocks and pathways on the coasts of eastern Scotland are fossilised imprints. Imprints depicting the same pattern, fossilised tracks left by very large animals that lived here over 300 million years ago, remains from an ancient ecosystem. At this time, Scotland was near the equator, and home to a lush rainforest ecosystem filled with strange animals. The tracks were the same shape as those made by millipedes or centipedes, only some of them measured to 30 centimetres or a foot wide. That is because at this time, the world's largest animals were giant bugs, or arthropods, and the largest herbivore in this ecosystem, feasting on the colossal amount of vegetation that was now on offer, was a giant millipede named Arthropleura. Also known from Scotland are tracks from another ancient millipede named Pneumodesmus that is actually even older than Arthropleura, with its fossils dating back to a mind-boggling 410 million years ago at least, and may have been even older. Arthropods, animals that possess an exoskeleton, were the first creatures to live on land, but they climbed out of the water on several separate occasions. The arachnids, the insects, or hexapods, and the myriapods all descended from aquatic ancestors the myriapods containing millipedes and their relatives the centipedes. Pneumodesmus' fossils make millipedes the oldest known animal to live and breathe air on dry land. These creatures that felt the sun for the first time were welcomed to a truly alien environment, with mushrooms the size of small trees and bizarre looking plants that couldn't grow any taller than your waist. By the time Arthropleura appeared, the planet was far more recognisable to certain ecosystems that exist today, although still very different. Millipedes had had a long time to settle in, evolve, and diversify. Their fossils are dated from a time known as the Carboniferous that took place 360 to 300 million years ago. During the Carboniferous, dense vegetation and forests had swallowed up large swathes of dry land. Although most of these plants weren't trees as we know them today, they were more primitive, with trees and plants of the time reproducing with spores rather than seeds, kind of like ferns do today. This dramatic increase in greenery across the earth meant there was far more food and shelter, so land ecosystems could increase in complexity, and with that, much larger animals could evolve. Although none as big as Arthropleura, there were many other giant arthropods crawling and even flying around the new mass of vegetation. Vertebrates had also adapted to life on land, with some small reptile-like animals being able to reproduce on land, and some of the semi-aquatic type evolving into powerful predators but the myriapods were the largest land creatures for the first half of the Carboniferous. Across Scotland, Arthropleura's tracks measuring 30 centimetres across or more are common, but it is known that they had a maximum size considerably larger than this. In Nova Scotia, Canada, there are wider tracks known, and in 2018, a rock fall on a cliff in northern England exposed an ancient giant, the fossilised top half of the largest Arthropleura discovered, the specimen measuring 55 centimetres across. When Arthropleura died, the decomposition process would degrade the weaker joining sections of the body first, leaving the tougher exoskeleton segments behind to fall apart. This had made incomplete remains common, with some fossils of these animals only being a singular segment. However, there are numerous juvenile fossils known, and scaling up their size to the width of the Arthropleura fossil discovered in England has shown it could have been 2 to 2.5 metres long. This would make it one of the largest arthropods known. The only arthropod known to have existed that could rival it was the giant sea scorpion Yecalopterus, an older oceanic arthropod that reached a similar length. Arthropleura may have looked menacing, but these creatures are thought to have actually been completely herbivorous. During the Carboniferous, some of the largest plants at the time were giant club mosses that could grow to the size of oak trees, and there is an Arthropleura specimen that has what is thought to be the gut contents containing debris that had fallen from these trees. However, this could be a coincidence, and these remains from the club mosses may not have been in the millipede's digestive tract, and actually, and they just happen to have fossilised together. Which may not be much of a coincidence, seeing as these trees were exceptionally common at the time. It is still highly likely that they were herbivorous though, seeing as almost every living species of millipede discovered is herbivorous, and they were one of the largest carboniferous creatures on land for most of the carboniferous. And the largest creature in an ecosystem is usually a herbivore. These monstrous animals were likely still preyed on by other animals as well, and definitely weren't too big to be eaten. Towards the last half of the Carboniferous period, there was an increasing number of powerful amphibians that coexisted with Arthropleura. For example, the species that lived in Scotland coexisted with an enormous predatory amphibian known as Anthracosaurus that was most likely capable of dismantling two-metre-long millipedes. 
there are also disadvantages to being a giant arthropod that are not faced by large vertebrates, that may have made them more vulnerable. When creatures with exoskeletons molt their shell, it is not an easy task, and it takes an exponentially longer time to shed the larger the animal is, and it takes additional time for the outer layer of their body to re-harden, leaving them vulnerable. Arthropleura were millipedes, but they were still incredibly weird animals. Millipedes are scientifically known as diplopoda, and it is generally agreed that they belong in this order of animals. However, they have many quirks that separate them from modern millipedes, and there are fossils from the time that share a lot more common features with living millipedes. They had a very distinctive look, being quite different in appearance to common millipedes. Many of Arthropleura's depictions show it having a very rounded head unlike any living millipedes. However, recently it was found that this was most likely Arthropleura's upper armor section, and that its head sat under this, like other millipedes. Recent study of these animals has found that most of the fossils may actually be fossils of their shell after they have shed their exoskeleton, which would explain why the fossils don't have a head, and why they are frequently discovered broken apart. However, there are other legitimate differences between Arthropleura and modern millipedes. They had a much lower profile relative to their body size, and small armoured nodules covering their legs. They look somewhat similar to a group of living millipedes known as the Chylonatha, although their relationship with modern millipedes is actually not known, and it isn't known if they were related to the Chylonatha or how closely related they were to any other group of living millipedes. They have been grouped together with other extinct millipedes from the time and are known as the Arthropleuridae, that contained some other large species and some down to only a centimetre long. So why did they get so big? For a long time, it was thought that the reason for Arthropleura's great size was down to higher atmospheric oxygen at the time. Myriapods and insects do not have a circulatory system that carries oxygen around their bodies, and instead oxygen is directly diffused into different parts of the body through open tubes known as trachea. This limits the size of modern arthropods because the oxygen will have a limit of how far it can naturally flow into a body. In the percentage mix of air we have currently, the size of an arthropod seems to cap out around the size of a coconut crab, the largest arthropod known to live on land. However, higher atmospheric oxygen would create much larger insects and myriapods because greater oxygen could make up for the lower efficiency of the tracheal system. However, more modern data has brought this into question. This is unlikely to be at least the whole reason behind the very large sizes of arthropods during the Carboniferous. It is true that atmospheric oxygen spiked to incredibly high levels during the Carboniferous period, in fact to some of the highest they have ever been. But it was towards the end of the period, and there are fossils of very large arthropleura known from around 330 million years ago, where atmospheric oxygen was only slightly higher than today. But also, arthropods are an incredibly versatile and adaptable group of animals that have conquered almost every habitat on the planet, including sometimes adapting potentially completely novel structures like wings. It seems very unlikely that they wouldn't have been able to have adapted another way of getting oxygen further into their bodies. And they may actually have done this. One of Arthropleura's many quirks that differentiated it from modern millipedes was that it seemed to have breathed in a different way. Many insects in the Carboniferous breathe through a tracheal system, like modern insects. However, Arthropleura fossils do not show them having the same system, and fossils known from Germany show that the underside of the Arthropleura's side nodule have strange organs that started to wrinkle up at the end, and these organs are where the tracheal tubes start on modern millipedes. So these organs could have helped increase the efficiency of their respiration, helping get oxygen into their larger bodies. Another explanation may just have been that during the Carboniferous, there was a lot less competition from other animals, especially large vertebrates. Because arthropods colonized the land so much earlier than all other animals, and they reproduced so quickly, by the time Arthropleura walked the earth, millipedes had just had a very long time to settle in and adapt. Without much competition on land at this time, it may just have been inevitable that some of the first large land animals would have been arthropods. Arthropleura were long survivors. They first appeared in the early part of the Carboniferous and survived into the Permian period, with the last fossils disappearing around 290 million years ago, meaning they were one of the longest living giant arthropods. During the Carboniferous, especially the last half, there was an increasing number of tetrapods, our ancestors, adapting and living in the same rainforests. For instance, Arthropleura fossils have been discovered preserved alongside areopoid amphibians, which were a family of amphibians that were incredibly common in the final stages of the Carboniferous. 
at the end of the Carboniferous, temperatures started to drop and the climate became drier. The large rainforest that dominated the time reduced in size significantly, being known as the rainforest collapse. But arthropleura fossils have been discovered in the Permian, even from ecosystems that aren't believed to have been heavily forested, so they were perhaps adaptive enough to leave the forests. So despite the influx of new animals evolving and environments changing around them, they continued to survive. However, they eventually did go extinct. It was thought that the collapse of the large rainforest towards the end of their reign was the cause of their extinction. However, now that there are many fossils known after this, this is unlikely to be the case. It may be that they survived the early waves of new vertebrates evolving, but eventually they weren't able to compete. These animals were becoming increasingly more common towards the end of the Carboniferous, but towards the end of the Carboniferous and the beginning of the Permian, there were many large predators that bred and lived their whole lives out of the water that would have been a threat to Arthropleura. Furthermore, around 300 million years ago was when some of the first large herbivorous vertebrates started to evolve, like the Edaphosaurids. Given more time, maybe giant arthropods could have adapted to overcome these issues, or maybe giant bugs just needed to be the first out of the water and are unlikely to evolve again. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.